In the area where Darren and I farm, we literally last summer had double normal rainfall from about mid-May to mid-September. It was unbelievable how much moisture we had. And you know, right away you'd say, oh, that's a great thing. You should have good crop. Well, the only problem we've got, or one of the problems we've got, is there are certain nutrients in the soil that are leachable, and some of those we lost. So today we want to talk about how to prevent loss as best you can, and how to supplement that in terms of fertility going forward so this problem doesn't happen again. Well, putting fertilizer on a field is always a big investment. It's putting plant food out there, and obviously the more plant food you put out, the more crop you hope will grow in your field. Now the downside of that, and the big risk, is that there are a few leachable nutrients. One that if you get too much rain it pushes them down in the soil below where the root zone is so the roots aren't able to extract them. Now the good thing is some of those nutrients may come back up later in the season but then again you really can't count on that that they'll come right at the right time that your crop won't have to suffer for some point during the year. So let's talk about these leachable nutrients starting with the most popular one nitrogen but also sulfur and boron and any other surprise that Brian wants to throw out today. Well, the other surprise that I'll throw out is salt. And you don't really think of salt as a nutrient, and quite frankly, we don't need a lot of salt. We do need a little bit, though. Salt is very leachable, and a lot of times what we're talking about here is not too little salt that we need more, but too much salt, and we did have that in a lot of areas. That's why we talk so much about drain tile and improving overall drainage, because if you have good drainage, salts will leach through the soil and get away, meaning that you can raise a better crop. Well, rather than focus on a low amount nutrient that we need, let's focus on the highest amount that we need is nitrogen. That's the nutrient that crops need the most of. And when you think about it, you think about our world in general, what makes up most of the air that we breathe? Well, it's nitrogen that's in the highest quantity. Crops need good nitrogen to make proteins and to grow and make healthy crops. So for crops, farmers are putting on plenty of nitrogen, especially for grass crops like corn and wheat. So when we're putting on high loads of nitrogen, it's important to understand the basics of our soils and to know how much nitrogen we can safely put on the crop. So one of the things you've got to look at, you have to test your soil for this, is cation exchange capacity. That tells you the holding capacity of your soil. If your cation exchange capacity is, let's say, 14, all you need to do is multiply that times 10, and you'll find out roughly how many pounds of nitrogen your soil can hold at any one point. So 14 times 10 is 140. Let's say you're trying to raise a 200 bushel corn crop, and you want to put 200 pounds of actual nitrogen out there. Should you do it in one application? Well, you could, but you don't want to do it in one application because your ground just is not going to hold it, especially if you get a lot of moisture. So make sure you're looking at that cation exchange capacity and make sure that you are not exceeding the level that you should. If you've got lighter soil, your cation exchange capacity is lower, you've got to do some spoon feeding. Put some out in the fall or spring, put some nitrogen out as the crop is growing. When we talk about nitrogen being able to be held in the soil, it's important that you understand that soil has a negative charge. And when we talk about nitrogen and its ability to leach, it's when it's in the nitrate form, NO3, that it has a negative charge. And when you have a negative charge and soil at a negative charge, they repel and that nitrate can move down when you get excessive water in the soil. Now, nitrogen can also be found in the ammonium form, which is NH4, which has a positive charge. When you can keep nitrogen in that ammonium form longer, it allows your plants the ability to take it in, it allows that ammonium to tie up with organic matter or soil particles a little bit longer, and it's just better for the environment overall. So if you have something in the nitrate form, you better hope that your plants can pull that in relatively quickly because leaching potential is much higher in the nitrate form. So what a lot of farmers will do to keep their nitrogen so it doesn't end up in the nitrate form, it is more stable, they will use products like Nutrisphere N or Instinct or NSERV. And when you're using these types of products right away, and I'm guilty of this even on our own farm, I say, boy, I don't know if I want to spend an extra five or $10 an acre, but it's not only to keep the nitrogen more stable, it's also the fact that if more nitrogen is in the ammonium form, did you know that plants can absorb both nitrate and ammonium? But if they absorb nitrate, they literally have to convert that back over to ammonium before they use it. So the plant uses more energy when it brings in nitrate. What I'm saying is if you can keep your nitrogen in the ammonium form longer, you've got a more efficient plant, you 
are going to get at least slightly more yield. Well, we've spent a lot of time talking about nitrogen, and it certainly gets the primary focus as a crop nutrient for your farm because you're going to have to use the most of it. But one of those nutrients you do need in significant quantities is sulfur. And it's one that for many farm programs, they've had to change over the last few years how much sulfur is being applied. Now, sulfur is one of those nutrients in our country that we used to get for free. In the upper Midwest, we had enough pollution in the air from many of the factories that we were getting all the sulfur that we needed without paying any money. Well, now we've cleaned up a lot of the pollution and we can all live another year or two longer, which I really <laughs> like and appreciate. But the downside of that is, as farmers, we do have to spend a little bit of money on sulfur fertilizer. But getting a recommendation of how much sulfur we apply is one of the tricky things that we've had to overcome. Well, here's kind of a standard thing that you can do. If you're putting nitrogen out on your farm for every 15 units of nitrogen, put out one pound of sulfur. So if you're putting out 150 units of nitrogen, you'd need 10 pounds of sulfur. That will get you at least relatively close. Now, the last one, nitrogen, sulfur, and the last one is boron. You don't need much boron at all. I mean, we're just talking about a pinch of boron per acre, but the problem is if you don't have boron at pollination time, you're not going to have good pollination. You're not going to have good yield. So just to spend a few dollars an acre or less, you can have all the boron that you're going to need for the whole year. Why not do that? You're already investing probably $100 or $200 an acre in all the rest of the fertilizer. Don't forget about that boron. Boron is leachable. So coming out of a wet year like this year, you probably don't have an ample amount in your soil right now. So make sure you're focused on all three of these nutrients, nitrogen, sulfur, and boron, because they are all very leachable. One other thing to keep focused on is our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? 